Th thank you, Lord Mayor. Birmingham is without doubt a great city. In fact, it's second to none. A thriving business sector, a thriving creative sector, one of the youngest cities in the world where our young people are the future of this great city. But Lord Mayor, there's no doubt we are going through a dark period, a very, very dark period for this local authority. Whilst the city is far greater than Birmingham City Council, there is no doubt that this council is the engine room for the city. And people are angry. Residents are angry. However, they expect leadership. When we put our heads above the parapet and when we stand for elected office, we not only put ourselves forward to lead in our wards and lead in this city in good times, we put ourselves forward to lead in difficult times. Lord Mayor, the city is demanding not just John Cotton to lead this great city council, but the 101 councillors to step forward, roll up our sleeves and work together. I want to welcome, Lord Mayor, the commitments made by opposition councillors to get involved. And I am sure the administration led by John Cotton will create an environment where all 101 members can contribute to the recovery plan moving forward. Lord Mayor, let's, let's put some facts on the table. Yes, there is no doubt whatsoever that we've had a billion pound worth of cuts. We've heard so eloquently from a number of speakers across the chamber who've talked about how these cuts have decimated services run by this council and the impact that's had on our staff and on our residents. We've also seen the decimation of public services outside this council by this Conservative government. But Lord Mayor, at the same time, we need to acknowledge there's been an eco-pay scandal across this country and over many, many years. There's been mistakes made by successive administrations and we have to acknowledge that and get that right because it's a scandal that women working for this authority and across our country have been paid less than men and that has to change and we can never go back there again. Lord Mayor, beyond the blame game, beyond the politics, beyond the politics, beyond the sound bites, we've got 1.1 million people who are relying on services to be delivered by this local authority. Some universal services like waste management, important services that keep the private sector going in terms of the, being a planning authority, being a highway authority. But we also, Lord Mayor, a city, an unequal city, we've got huge inequalities. We've got deprivation. I represent one of the most deprived neighbourhoods in this city. And we absolutely have to ensure that we do everything possible, all together collectively, to protect those direct and indirect services that we support that impact on those most vulnerable in our city. That are often the last line of defence for our communities. Lord Mayor, I want to welcome, um, as John, uh, Councillor John Cotton has said, the appointment of Max Keller. Some of us worked with Max Keller when he was appointed as a non-executive director in 2019. And there's one con conversation I remember Max having with me and another colleague during that period of time, where he talked about how decades ago, officers across this country and members across this country used to run to Birmingham to learn of us, who we were leading the way in terms of local government. These were the era of Dick Knowles, uh, Neville Bosworth, Michael Lyons, Tim Brighouse and others. Lord Mayor, together we can get there. We need to work together. We need to roll up our sleeves. We need to unite across this chamber. The citizens of this city are demanding that Birmingham City Council's elected members, supported by our very able staff, all work collectively to Thank ensure you, that we can continue to deliver Thank the you. services that people demand. Thank okay. you, Lord Mayor. Okay.